When I went to Medicine Lodge, Kansas, there were seven dives where drinks were sold. I began to ask why should we have the saloon when Kansas was a prohibition state and our constitution made it a crime to manufacture, barter, sell, or give away intoxicating drinks. These dive keepers really were not as much to blame as the city officials who were in league with this lawless element and could see the wicked walking on every side and the vilest men exalted. Carrie Nation. Carrie Nation's life was filled with tragedy. Her mother died in an insane asylum, convinced she was Queen Victoria. Her first husband drank himself to death. A second unhappy marriage would end in divorce. She determined to give herself over to the struggle against what she called the place where the serpent drink crushed the hopes of my early years, the saloon. Kansas had already banned the sale of alcohol in every one of its 105 counties, but the state's dusty cow towns and large cities alike were filled with thirsty men, and no one paid much attention to the law. As president of the Barber County WCTU, Carrie Nation had led peaceful marches that had had little effect, wrote letters to legislators and lawmen that were never even answered, and eventually became convinced God wished her to do more. On the 6th of June, 1900, before retiring, I threw myself downward at the foot of my bed and told the Lord to use me in any way to suppress the dreadful curse of liquor. I told him I wished I had a thousand lives, that I would give him all of them. And I wanted him to make it known to me some way. The next morning, before I awoke, I heard these words very distinctly. Go to Kiowa, and I'll stand by you. The next morning, with an armload of what she called smashers, rocks and bottles wrapped in paper to look like harmless packages, she strode into a saloon in Kiowa. I told the owner, Mr. Dobson, get out of the way. I don't want to strike you, but I'm going to break up this den of ice. I began to throw at the mirror and the bottles below the mirror. Mr. Dobson and his companion jumped into a corner, seemed very much terrified. From that, I went to another saloon until I had destroyed three. The other dive keepers closed up, stood in front of their places and would not let me in. By this time, the streets were crowded with people. One boy, about 15 years old, seemed perfectly wild with joy. I have since thought of that being a significant sign, for to smash saloons will save the boy. She dared the sheriff to arrest her. He did not. She moved on to Wichita to attack the most opulent saloon in town, the bar in the Hotel Cary. When a policeman arrested her there for defacing property, she shouted at him, I am defacing nothing. I am destroying. You put me in here a cub, she said from behind bars, but I will go out a roaring lion, and I will make all hell howl. Her exploits were front-page news. Hundreds of congratulatory telegrams arrived from all over the country. As soon as she got out, she attacked another saloon, this time with the weapon that would become her symbol, a hatchet. 